continuing our discussion from the last video, I now want to create something a little bit more interesting and practical. And for this video, I thought of creating a transform controller, which will be able to take a UV coordinate of another mesh and then place our mesh onto the three-dimensional point on the surface of this other mesh using that UV coordinate. So basically what this means if I create a sphere here and I want to be able to specify a random UV coordinate on the sphere and have this, this teapot appear on the surface of this mesh wherever that UV coordinate is. So to do this I'm going to reuse the graph from the previous video and I'm just going to move these nodes out of the view for now because we're going to, not going to be using them. And first thing is I'm going to create an input which will accept this other sphere or really any other object that we might want to use for our UV and texture coordinates. So let me just drag out an input and I'm going to type mesh but this can really be any other name and the key part here is to specify that we want a polygon mesh. And once you do that you can see in the UI we have our polygon mesh input where I will specify the sphere that we have here. And now this, this mesh over here is a polygon mesh and it specifies the geometry, which are the vertices and the polygons of this mesh. What we want to do now is specify the texture coordinates for this mesh. And to do it, I'm going to right click on this input and use the add mesh component input dropdown and use the texture coordinates in the sub menu of that drop down. Whenever I do that, I can see that there is a new input that was added. Its type is also a polygon mesh, but it doesn't appear in our user interface. And that is because this new texture coordinate sub input or component input is a part of this mesh. And in reality, it just returns the texture coordinates of our mesh. And the reason it is also a polygon mesh is because in lab, we deal with textures also using polygon meshes, but instead of containing our three-dimensional vertex and face positions, uh, or other vertex positions and face indices, our texture coordinate contains UVW texture coordinate for vertices, and for faces it contains texture faces. But the only catch is that the number of faces in our texture coordinate mesh has to match the number of faces in our standard geometrical mesh. We are going to be at first dealing only with mesh texture coordinates, and the way I want to to uh, proceed by, to create this tool is to first get a user to enter a UV coordinate and then find on the texture mesh, find the point that is closest to this UV coordinate. And for this point, I'm going to extract the face index and the tri triangle index on this face. Using this triangle, I'm going to get a barycentric coordinate of our of our point specified by user and then I'm going to reuse this very central coordinate to essentially get the three-dimensional coordinate on our geometrical mesh. And if this sounds a little bit too complicated, you can still try to follow along as I create these nodes and I will explain try to explain further as we go along. First thing I'm going, to, I'm going to do is create a polygon mesh projected grid node and this is a utility node which I have created just for, for this purpose and it's basically a utility node which allows you to check uh, to find closest points to a polygon mesh and it also has another helpful f helper function which allows you to check whether a point is inside or outside the mesh but we will get to that in another tutorial. So first thing I need to specify is the mesh and for this I'm going to drag our texture coordinate mesh. Now again this is a texture coordinate not the standard mesh because at first we'll be dealing in UVW spaced as opposed to our world space coordinates. The bin count parameter just needs to be something like 10 and it is an internal parameter used to optimize the the algorithm for this. We don't really need to know what it does really. So if I output, if I drag the output here, I can get the type value node for my polygon projected grid. And inside this this uh, node, I can see that there is a get closest polygon index uh, output, which I can drag out to get our function for getting closest polygon index. It accepts a coordinate parameter. I'm just going to create uh, input for this. And this input... I'm going to rename, actually, I'm going to rename this our UVW coordinate. This input will accept the UV and W coordinate where we want our, our uh, teapot to reside. And if you notice, the there are multiple outputs for this node, which I'm going to rename to get closest polygon, just so we know what it does. And the main uh, things that we are interested in are the the triangle index of the polygon 
or actually the, we're interested in the polygon index, which is going to be the output for this. And there, then we're interested in triangle index on top of this polygon. And then we're also interested in the actual point of intersection, which is the point on this triangle where, uh, which is the closest point to the one that we specify here. So I'm going to go back to my mesh and I'm going to create a tag value for it just so, so we can access polygons over mesh. Then I'm, I will drag out the polygon array and I will drag out the get item so we can get individual polygon. What we're interested in is just getting this one polygon which it happens to be the polygon where the closest point to our UV coordinate is. I'll drag the polygon index into it. And now we need to get the polygon parameters and we need to get the triangles of the polygon, which we can use uh, the get triangles function for. Get triangles essentially gets you an array of triangles, each triangle being a, a three component index. You can see here that it's, it's an array of index three values and it has a getter function, so we now can we now can, can uh, take our triangle index parameter and put it into this getter function. So we're we're just we have narrowed it from a polygon, which can have any number of points, to a single triangle, which can have which always has three points. And now that we have the three points of our triangle we need to get the actual vertex positions of these points so we can use them to get the barycentric coordinate of our intersection. So to do this, I'm going to do the same thing as we did with polygons, but instead we're going to drag out the vertices array. And from vertices array, I will drag out three items, get item, and each one of these getters will retrieve a vertex for us. And I will take out the output of, of this of this triangle, which will give me an index three, and it has the three components, has component one, two, and three. And these are the indices of the vertices that we are interested in. So I'm gonna drag component one there, component two here, and the component three here. So these are actually the three vertices over here. These are the three vertices that can, that create the triangle, which our, our UVW coordinate is closest to. So now we need to convert, we need to take this triangle and we also need to take this point of intersection and get the barycentric coordinates from it. There is a function in the field geometry called two barycentric coordinates. If I start typing it, it says uh, it's part of vector three. So I'm gonna create this node. It accepts the three vertices, which we have just retrieved. So I'm gonna take this vertex this vertex and I'm going to take this vertex and for the point I will take our point of, of intersection or this is actually the closest point that this algorithm could find here and now our bar central coordinates specify the the coordinates in this triangle uh, relative coordinates to the to each one of its vertices where our UVW coordinate is. So now that we have this information, again, because of, of uh, the fact that our geometrical mesh has to contain the same number of faces and each one of these faces has to be vertex by vertex identical to our, uh, our geometry mesh, we can use this information to repeat the steps for our geometry mesh. So I'm gonna drag out the geometrical mesh object and I'm gonna go through all the same steps that we have undergone before. I'll just rename this, just to make it clear, I'll rename this to our texture mesh. And this is our geometry mesh over here. Now I will just retrace what I have just done. So first thing I did was drag out the polygons. Then from the polygons have got gotten the getter method. Into the getter method I has, have piped in the output value. Of, of our get closest polygon, which is the closest polygon index. Then I have again gotten the type value for this. I have uh, gotten the triangles of our polygon. Again, these are the triangles of our geometrical meshes and these are the triangles of our texture mesh, but the topology is identical. So we can just reuse the same kind of, the, the same nodes that we had before. And uh, now we'll get the triangle getter and the triangle we're interested in is this polygon triangle index. So we'll pipe that in here and we'll get this triangle. So we have the three components and now we'll do the same with vertices. So we take this geometric mesh, we drag out our vertices and we drag out the three vertex 
coordinates that we need. And for each one of these vertex coordinates, we'll use the components that we have just gotten of our triangle. So component one, component two, whoops, component two, and then component three goes into here. Now, we want to take this barycentric coordinate over here and we want to apply it to these world space vertices over here. To do that, there is another function called from barycentric coordinate, also part of vector three. And what it accepts are the three vertices, again, which are vertices over here. And it also accepts a barycentric coordinate, which we have just computed right now. And the result of this function will produce a world coordinate uh, point that corresponds to our closest UVW point. And let's try and see what happens if we pipe out the output into our position of our controller. Look at control over here. And um, if I start changing the parameters, it cannot be zero. So if I start change, changing it from zero, we can see that now it kind of follows along the path. So we can see that actually is working, but the only problem is that instead of, instead of being on top of the sphere, it is uh, doing it around the origin of our coordinate system. And this essentially means that it's doing it right, but it's doing it on object coordinates rather than world coordinates. And what we really need to do is, is multiply this final result position by the transformation of our sphere. And to do that, I just need to add another component. Just like we added the texture coordinates here for the mesh, we can also add another component called transformation. Again, it doesn't create any user interface item, but it, it creates a uh, mesh X form parameter, which is an X form three. And this will be the transformation or X form of our sphere. If I drag this out, well, actually, I need to take this this final X form and I just need to multiply it by this incoming mesh X form. So I'm going to create a multiply node. And as the second operand, that's going to be our result, which is an object coordinates. And we're going to multiply it by the, the transformation over sphere. And this is going to be our final result. And as you can see now, our, our um, teapot sticks to our sphere and I can change the UV coordinate here. There is no W coordinate, but I can change the UV coordinate and have our teapot follow our sphere. And if we move or in any other way, we can alt if we alter the sphere, you can see that it sticks to it. Likewise, if I now take the sphere and I go and, for example, add a bend modifier to it and I start modifying it, you can see that the teapot continues sticking onto the sphere. And the reason for that is because, again, we are using the texture UV coordinates, which remain the same. As, and just to see what happens when we change the UV coordinates, I can add a UVW modifier to this. So I'm going to add a UVW map. And you see, as you see, if, as I modify the, the texture coordinates, we are, our teapot actually moves along the surface of the sphere, whatever this, this new coordinate happens to be, uh, as, as the texture coordinates for the sphere change. And just to, to demonstrate this on another object other than, than sphere, I'm going to create a teapot. I'm going to make it bigger so we can see what's happening uh, with our smaller teapot. And you can see that, that our teapot is moving along the bigger teapot, using the bigger teapot's coordinates. And just like so, we can we can constrain it to the surface of this other teapot. And in a similar kind of fashion, I'm just going to create a torus node. And I'm going to see what happens if I move this on top of a torus node. I'm going to select the teapot. If I change this to a, a normal value, which is between zero and one, we can see that we now are able to move this along the torus node. So this is it for this tutorial.